Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation, and if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at OSPF features and characteristics. We'll be discussing an introduction to OSPF, components of OSPF, link state operation, single area and multiple area OSPF, and finally, OSPF version 3. This episode is part of my series on enterprise networking, security, and automation. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. OSPF stands for Open Shortest Path First. It's a dynamic routing protocol that's there to help us get the best path from source to destination. Typically, there's multiple paths through the network. There's multiple redundant paths. And the, the data could take one path or the other. This routing protocol uses an algorithm to decide which is the best way. OSPF is a link state routing protocol. What a link state routing protocol does is it keeps track of the state of every link in the network. And then based upon all of that information, it chooses the best path to get across the network. Now, a link state protocol is the alternative for a distance vector. Distance vector is typically an older technology. The, the one we talk about the most for a distance vector routing protocol is RIP, Routing Information Protocol. There was some limitations with that, but OSPF doesn't have those limitations. OSPF is a faster converging and it scales larger. Faster converging means when there's a change to the network for OSPF, it comes to a nice point where all the devices know the best routes across the network quicker than a distance vector protocol. And it scales larger. OSPF, yes, you can run it with a couple of routers on your network, but it scales up to hundreds of networks. And you can even get into bigger networks by taking it from a single area to a multi-area OSPF. OSPF keeps track of three different types of links for its link state routing protocol. The first type of link is the interface on a router. The second type of link is a network segment that connects two different routers. And then finally, that third link is a stub network. And we're talking about like an Ethernet LAN that's connected to a single router. Those are the three types of links that this OSPF link state routing protocol will keep track of. Now, the information about a state is known as its link state. All link state information includes the network prefix, network length, and cost. Network prefix, network length, network address, subnet mask, keeps track of all that, keeps track of the cost. As you have to go through more devices and more networks, that cost increases. OSPF prefers to use lower cost networks. When we talk about routing protocols, routing protocols all share similar components. They all share a method in which they can exchange router information. Typically, we call these router protocol messages where they can share information between the routers. Then those messages are used to build a data structure, a database about all of that information. Then once we have that database built, once the data is inside of a data structure, the routing protocol uses an algorithm to figure out what is the best path, the most efficient way across the network from the source to the destination. OSPF exchanges five different types of message. The first message is a hello packet. Basically it says, hey, I'm there. Second type of message is that database description packet that describes what our database looks like. The third one is the link state request where it goes, hey, I wanna know what the status of this link is. The fourth one is you've requested this. Now we're gonna send you a link state update packet. That's the fourth one. And then the last one is this link state acknowledgement packet where after you receive that update, you're gonna acknowledge it because OSPF likes to have that full conversation. OSPF maintains three different databases for this link state routing. The first one is an adjacency database. It keeps track of who its neighbors are. The adjacency 
database is unique to each router. Each router has its own because it has different neighbors. And we can use the or we can view this by the whoops by the show IP OSPF neighbor command. That'll show us all the neighbors OSPF has learned. The second database is a link state database or known as the LSDB. This is the topology table. This is the the recording and keeping track of all the links and their states within our network, all those connections that we've talked about. It lists all the information about all the other routers. All the routers within our area have the same link state database. Because they know about every link in the database, each router is going to have that same exact table. Now, if you want to view this link state database, show IP OSPF database, that will show you the link state database. And the third and final database is the forwarding database. This is that routing table. It's it's a list of routes and, and we've generated it through the algorithm. And we have based it off of that link state database to see what those links are. Each router's routing table is gonna be unique to that router because of the different neighbors and the different situations and the different paths that lead from that router to the other destinations. If you want to view that forwarding database, this is the show IP route command. That'll show you all the routes that OSPF has learned. OSPF uses the Dijkstra algorithm, the Dijkstra shortest path first algorithm. Basically what this is in simple terms is a cumulative cost to reach the destination. Every time you go through another router through another network it adds to the cost it makes that number higher if you're going to purchase something you would want to pay the best price you'd want to pay the lowest price you wouldn't go out and pay double the price for something if a price was lower same thing here with ospf and that dykstra shortest path first algorithm because that cost increases every time you go through a network you want to use the lowest cost first. That's going to be your primary path across the network. And that's how you can remember lowest cost is the way to go because you don't want to pay more than you have to. Shortest path first algorithm creates a shortest path first tree. How this works is each router creates their own tree. They create themselves as the root. They calculate the shortest path to each node. Then from there, that shortest path first tree is used to calculate the best pass. Because we have the cost to each node, we can then call, calculate the best path, the best routes. Once we have the best routes, we put that into that forwarding database. And then that forwarding database makes our routing table. And the, the routing table is what's used to route data across our networks. If you like this episode on OSPF features and characteristics and you get value out of it and depending upon what platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five star rating, leave a comment. Doing this helps support the channel, which in turn helps me bring you more great content. Subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell. You can also view my website at kevtechify.com for all of my details and how to get these episodes in video and podcast form. To maintain routing information, OSPF routers complete a generic link state routing process. When they complete that, they reach a state of convergence. In this state of convergence, all routers know about all states. Because they know about all states, they can figure out what the best paths are to the nodes. They calculate those distances. They can figure out what the best routes are. Now, to establish this, link state routing goes through several steps. First one is they establish their neighbor adjacencies. They figure out what OSPF routers are next to me. Then they ex- they exchange link state advertisements between them. They send messages to each other advertising the different networks they have, the different states of those networks and connections. After they get those link state advertisements done, they build this link state database. This link state database is the state of every link. So they build this data structure and has all this data in here. Once they have this data structure complete, they execute that Dijkstra shortest path first algorithm. 
it goes through it processes that database and when it's done processing it with the algorithm it chooses the best path across the network that best path across the network turns out to be the best route to route data across your network to make OSPF more efficient and more scalable, OSPF supports a hierarchical routing structure. And what we can do here is we can set up certain routers that share the same link state database. We can have them just communicate with each other. And we can have several of those. If you have a smaller network, we can have all of our devices in a single OSPF area. That's that area is where all those routers share that link state database. To make OSPF more efficient and scalable, we can have multiple areas. And that's where this multi-area OSPF comes in. The focus of this episode is on single area OSPF version two. Multi-area OSPF is a hierarchical topology design. And it gives us some abilities to scale this to much larger networks. What multi-area does is it gives us smaller routing tables. Here on the bottom, we have an example. We have area one, area zero, area 55. We have three different areas. Each one of these areas is a basically a link state database. All the devices in that area share that same link state database. If you're out of that area, you're not part of that. And because of that, because you're only keeping track of the devices in your area, you have smaller routing tables. You don't have to keep track of every link state in the entire network just in your area. We have reduced link state update overhead. Once again, because you're only concerned about the changes within your area. You only have to do updates for your area. If, if there's a change that happens in a different area, you don't worry about updating all of your tables and going through the algorithms again, which also leads us to reduce frequency of your shortest path first calculations, because you're only concerned about the localized impact of your changes. You're not going to propagate your changes outside of your area. You're going to get nobody else's area changes in your area. The link state advertisements, they stop at an area boundary. Once again, this episode is about OSPF version two, but let's talk a little bit about OSPF version three. OSPF version three is the equivalent of OSPF version two is IP version four, but OSPF version three is for IP version six. It exchanges those IP version six prefixes. The OSPF version three address families support both IP version four and IP version six. If you're running both IP version four and IP version six, you want to run OSPF version three. If you're running just OSPF ver version two, then you're just, you should be just running IP version four. OSPF version three has the same functionality of OSPF version two, but it uses the IP version six. It communicates with OSPF version three peers. It advertises the IP version six routes. It uses, once again, the Dijkstra shortest path first algorithm to determine the best pass. OSPF version three is a separate process from its OSPF version two IP version four counterpart. It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on OSPF features and characteristics. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, and depending upon the platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All of my socials and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com, and you can get all these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on enterprise networking, security, and automation. In the bottom right is one of my favorite episodes that I linked just for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on enterprise networking, security, and automation. Once again, I'm Kevin, 
This is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.